Have you ever wondered why all the films are sort of the same? Do you often find yourself correctly guessing the next scene or an action point when watching TV shows? You probably already know this is not an accident and you are right, there is a pattern in place and it allows you to make some good predictions and guesses when watching films. This pattern is called the monomyth or the hero's journey and is common knowledge among writers, producers and story consultants, but surprisingly it remains relatively unknown in the popular culture. If you have always wondered what makes all good films so similar then stay tuned because I have a lot of information for you in this video. Video. We are going to have a look at the origins of the hero's journey and we will discuss the main points of the pattern. We will see a well-known example displaying this pattern in action. We will meet people who develop the hero's journey pattern into a simpler and an easier to follow guide. We will finally look at the impact of the hero's journey on profitability of films. At the very end, I will explain why this pattern matters or should matter to you personally and I will show you some unusual uses that it has been put to. Welcome back to Backwards Compatible. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, like and hit the notifications button. These videos are a product of my genuine interest and I want to hear from people who are also drawn to similar ideas. Let me know what you think in the comment section and definitely, definitely suggest other topics that you find interesting. The idea of the hero's journey, the pattern of storytelling that is a universal theme that connects The Lion King, Star Wars and Rick and Morty awaits. If you want to learn more, keep watching. So what is this mysterious, all-encompassing pattern? It's quite simple really, and you will see that you already know it without knowing that you know it. It begins like this. The not yet hero encounters a problem, or is involved in an accident that pulls him into a series of challenges. He has to befriend a stranger, or to find a mentor, and then to face many obstacles of increasing difficulty to finally deal with the ultimate monster or an almost impossible challenge. The last mission can only be accomplished if the protagonist manages to find an answer to a deep, troubling personal question, perhaps an issue that he has been dealing with and avoiding at all costs until that very moment. Once this has been done, the hero can become the person he was always meant to be, which means that he can achieve his true potential. When the hero has understood and accepted the paradoxical nature of reality in his life, he can transform into a fully-fledged hero, and at the end, the hero returns to his home, but as a better, unafraid version of himself, able to face challenges in the darkness of his own soul. That's it, that's the pattern. This pattern is called the monomyth or the hero's journey and is often credited to Joseph Campbell, a comparative mythologist who first recognized recurring themes in stories. More about him later in the next part of the video, but first let's have a look at how the monomyth plays out in Disney productions. Disney films offer great examples because plot lines are often symbolic and quite straightforward, yet very meaningful. Contrary to popular belief, this is no accident. The fact that all stories have a happy ending even when the original material that they are based on did not is only one of the examples of Disney sticking to the monomyth over time. Let's take a look at Moana. Moana is the princess of the people of Montunui. The island they live on begins to die and in order to save her people Moana disobeys her father and begins the journey to restore the heart of the Fiti. To accomplish this she first needs to overcome a series of challenges. She needs to find and befriend the demigod Maui to show courage while fighting the coconut people. She needs to outsmart the greedy crab that lives in a cave at the bottom of the ocean. And she needs to help Maui to get his magical fish hook back. Maui will then mentor Moana who will learn the forgotten skills of her ancestors, voyaging and then they will together attempt to restore the heart of Tefiti. After the initial failure, Moana learns who she really is. Only then can she face the final challenge, the lava monster Teka. However, in the process Moana discovers that Teka, a vicious lava monster, and Tefiti are one and the same benevolent and terrifying entity. Moana is then able to restore the heart of Tefiti. She saves her people and goes back to the island of Montunui having achieved her true potential. You may be wondering whether all films really follow the steps in the hero's journey and this is a very valid question to ask. We will come back to it shortly but before we do, let's take a quick look at how this concept of the monomyth became the dominant 
common storytelling pattern in the film industry. Among the people who are most recognizable in relation to the hero's journey, probably the most important one to know is Joseph Campbell. This is because he devoted majority of his life and career to discovering the universal pattern and describing it in his books. But very few people are fully aware of how impactful Campbell's work was and is today. You should be aware that at this point the hero's journey is an open secret among writers and screenwriters who use it as anchor points for plot lines and character arches. If you're a fan of Star Wars, you probably already know that George Lucas also relied heavily on the hero's journey to write his story. He considered Joseph Campbell to be his mentor and even took part in a documentary film called The Power of Myth, where he discussed his views on storytelling, universal human symbols, and the hero's journey. Everything, because that's, what, that's where mythology came from. You know, it's constructing uh, some kind of, of, of context for the unknown. There's, a, again, a mixture of all kinds of, of uh, mythology and religious beliefs that have been amalgamated into the movie. And I've tried to take the ideas that seem to cut across the most cultures. Uh, because I'm fascinated by that, and I think that's one of the things that um, I really um, got from Joe Campbell was that what's what he was trying to do was find the common threads through the various mythology, through the the religion. Realistically speaking, it would be pointless to dive into Campbell's masterpiece, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, as it is an aged book that incorporates many, many complex ideas, including psychoanalysis and a detailed take on mythology. However, there is still tremendous value in the pattern captured by Joseph Campbell, so we will mention a few key points. While most commentators discuss the fact that the hero's journey is often represented as a circle and that it is made up of up to 17 stages, some of which are optional, this description tells us very little about why the idea itself works. What most people fail to appreciate is that Campbell's monomyth closely follows and is based on the Jungian idea of the conscious and the unconscious. The journey itself is in fact the hero's journey to discover himself, that is to become more self-aware, to bring light to parts of him that were hidden from his view before. Because each one of us is a hero of our own story, of our own life, we tend to naturally engage with this pattern that represents challenges we face, our daily struggles. But to see the monomyth as a simple step-by-step -step plan for a story would not do it any justice. To really understand the importance and the genius of the hero's journey, one must pay attention to what influenced Campbell's thinking. As I said before, Campbell was where were and drawn to the Jungian and the Freudian ideas of psychoanalysis. He took the view that all myths and legends are linked by the universality of the human psyche. He believed that stories are at their core a manifestation of our need to explain the realities of life. The singular pattern of becoming a hero is therefore universal and cross-cultural. This means that while the details of each story may differ, the plotline by necessity includes key points that follow the pattern of personal transformation of the protagonist. This crucial moment of transformation of the main character is a recurring theme in most films. It is the moment of looking at the real self, and you have seen it in countless films over and over again. At the end of the day, the most important question to ask about the actual influence of the monomyth is why is it so popular? What is it about this pattern that makes it so powerful? And frankly, is it really so pervasive and all-encompassing? If you have any doubts, here is a challenge for you. Can you name a successful film or a book that does not follow the pattern of the hero's journey. If you do, please leave a comment below because I have struggled tremendously to find any well-known examples. Often I would start watching a film only to discover that rather than having one hero's journey, the story unfolding shows multiple journeys being shown at once. The short answer to the question why the monomyth is so often utilized is that it is honestly very effective at drawing and keeping audiences engaged. It sells. Let's have a quick look at the 10 most profitable films made to this date. As you can see, all follow the hero's journey. While this is not the only or perhaps not even the main reason for their success, 
it can really make you wonder about the real impact of the monomyth on how we judge a film and whether we are willing to pay for it. The profit generating capacity is a superficial answer that only tells us a part of this story, yet it is a very important aspect of the hero's journey and it accounts for the power of persuasion of this pattern. The extent of its presence in popular culture can be overwhelming and the best example of this is offered by Disney. As I indicated at the beginning, it is very easy to spot the hero's journey pattern in Disney films. And here is where another key figure of the storytelling universe has to be introduced. You may not know who Christopher Vogler is, but you have seen the effects of his work. He is a story consultant who reviewed the materials for The Lion King, Aladdin and some other well-known films. He also wrote a practical guide to the hero's journey for screenwriters that later on allegedly became an obligatory read at Disney. Here is what Vogler has to say about the pattern. Quote, the hero's journey is not an invention but an observation. It is a recognition of a beautiful design, a set of principles that govern the conduct of life and the world of storytelling the way physics and chemistry govern the physical world." End quote. If you are an aspiring writer or visual storyteller, his book The Writer's Journey is one of the best practical guides to creating engaging plotlines. His description of the monomyth offers a simple yet useful insight on how to build a story and how to choose the archetypical features of your story. He also shares some surprising insights on some international differences in audience preferences. But why should you care about any of this if you are not working in the field? Unexpectedly, the reason why the hero's journey works, why it makes a profit, while also engaging with the viewers from every culture, offers some controversial implications on human nature and explains why we like what we like. Superficially, you may be drawn to thinking that it is you who decides what films and books you like. You may even think that you are the locus of your choices in general. Here's an argument to make you question this assumption in the context of films and stories. If it is in fact impossible for you to enjoy a film that does not follow the hero's journey, to what extent can you claim that you get to choose at all? It would be like saying that you can choose to like any food item, yet some plants are poisonous and rotten meat would probably kill you. Every cell in your body is designed to detect rotten meat and feel disgust. Even if you wanted to, you could not enjoy it. That is simply to say you are not built to eat all things. You are also not built to enjoy all types of stories, films and books. Some food items are edible and tasty, much like some types of stories are naturally easy to fall into. This is what the hero's journey represents, a pattern of transformation that makes the hero overcome obstacles that also happens to match whatever is sitting in our unconscious mind, left unsaid and undiscovered. As can be expected, Christopher Vogler is not the only one who took up the mantle from Joseph Campbell. Dan Harmon, the co-creator of Rick and Morty, distilled Campbell's monomyth into The Story Circle, a technique for writers. His simplified hero's journey is made up of eight stages that are much easier to follow, understand and use. If you want to look deeper into his technique, I strongly recommend the video of Will Schroeder on the hero's journey, which you will find in the link below. However, the basic description is quite self-explanatory anyway. A character is in a zone of comfort, but they want something, so they enter an unfamiliar situation, adapt to it, get what they wanted, pay a heavy price for it, and then return to their familiar situation having changed. Before I get to the conclusion, thank you so much for staying with me until the end of the video. Leave a like so that I know you're out there watching. If you found value in the information I have shared, tell me about it. Now back to the hero's journey. So where does it all leave us? The hero's journey may be good if you're planning to write a book, 
or a screenplay. But why should you care about its importance if you're not working in the field? The hero's journey as it is known now is both understated and underestimated and I will explain what I mean by it now. In 1949, Joseph Campbell noted that as our society moves from a group-based one-to-one that focuses on the individual, we are losing the symbols that bring meaning to our stories and our lives. As a result of this process, we have also lost interest in our psyche and in learning why our interests are driven by those universal symbols in mythology. Indeed, you may find yourself wondering right now, why should you care that Zazu from The Lion King is a bird who brings messages, or that there is a dragon living under the mountain in The Hobbit? This lack of popular interest puts the pattern in the hero's journey in a very difficult and somewhat paradoxical position. On one hand, it has become widely appreciated by writers and companies who see it as a practical tool to make money and engage with viewers from all over the planet. On the other hand, some would say that it is also seen as slightly too difficult and excessively complicated for an average person to use in their own lives, especially in Campbell's version. As a result, the real value of the monomyth is mostly lost and very few people can truly distill the meaning of the circle of personal transformation that it offers. Those who are able to find the meaning of the circle of transformation have used it as a healing tool to get out of addiction, and they have used it to improve therapy effectiveness by reframing the role of a therapist. I will come back to those hidden uses of the hero's journey in this series if this is something that you are interested in, so let me know in the comment section below. I hope that after watching this explanation you will be able to spot the key points of the hero's journey when watching your favourite shows and films. Next time that you find yourself crying or laughing out loud or really worried for a character in a film, I hope that you will be able to catch yourself in the moment and really consider why is that the case and what impact the story pattern had on your experience of watching. Thanks for watching this video, please like, subscribe and hit the notification button if you enjoyed this video. The next topic that I will be discussing will focus on the call to adventure and whether you should follow your passion or common sense when choosing your life path from the point of view of the hero's journey.